probably like to think of myself as somebody who's done the hard yards, but I'm happy with the way I did them. Um, and ultimately in your own lives, um, if you come out at the end of it and thinking, well, maybe there's a few things I would have changed, but um, overall, uh, if I had my time again, I just don't know whether I would have taken a, a, a different path. And I think if you can set that as one of your aims, uh, you're well and truly on the way. Um, now, that young fellow, <laughs> he, he probably doesn't have a lot of idea where he's heading, but he was a very capable young man, but he's confident about what he's doing. He's not worried about the bulls beside him. Um, somebody else was very worried about him drinking that water that those bulls were drinking out of. I tell that person I was a bit worried about um, <coughs> him drinking the, the water that those bulls were drinking too. <laughs> And it, it's all a matter of an approach and things. And I guess all of us is a sort of a survival deal. Think we're bulletproof. Um, because if you don't think that, I feel sorry for you because life becomes pretty hard. Uh, <clears throat> but we're not bulletproof. Uh, we maybe have the ability to, um, when the flat gets a bit thick, to think I can cope with it. But um, you need to have a mindset that says, I'm not going to be here forever. Um, the business that I've worked my butt off to build up needs to go somewhere when I step away from it. And I think you people um, have made that first step, even if you haven't progressed along the uh, chain any further by being here today, to see what's, what's available and how um, a transition of your business can take place. And I'll, I'll be very focused on what we did and, and how it happened and hopefully there'll be some points in that that you can adjust to your own system. <clears throat> now every, every person's individual um, situation is going to vary some so what suited me very unlikely to suit all of you um, but there's going to be a lot of similarities I think. Um, now <clears throat> I, I was very fortunate in that the enterprise that I owned um, came to me ultimately through inheritance, but uh, you know, without being arrogant again about it, what, what its value was had a lot to do with what I'd put into it. And I had worked hard to do that, um, and so I wanted to, to ensure that it, it went along, hopefully with the concept that I'd in, uh, inherited it with, and then tried to build on. Um, and again, our situation was fairly fortunate in that we have a very close family structure within our family. Um, our kids, we had our family when we were relatively young, so we, they grew up with us um, and understood the same sort of paradigms, I guess, uh, except that they were a little more inclined to be able to use their thumb to um, print on a, on a mobile phone. <laughs> than I was and, and it, that was one of the other things that s suggested to us as we, we being my wife and I got closer to the time we thought we should start to think about moving aside or getting out of the business and letting somebody else take over, uh, <clears throat> that change needs to happen in any business for it to progress um, and sometimes change isn't all that easy to accept but there are other people out there um, who do have the skills to introduce that change to your business and I think you should be prepared to accept that and try and take them on board when you can. Our immediate business was very family focused to, to an extent that my wife and I we had three children um, that had their own university degrees, they had their own careers and while our son had worked at, at home for a short time um, we have our eldest daughter's a vet, and my son's a vet, and our youngest daughter um, has an ag science degree. Um, so they're all virtually involved in uh, basic production, animal or rural production. Um, and they were really set up with their own careers, so they weren't involved in the day to day running of our enterprise. And so when we decided it was time to do something about this, um, transition plan rather than a succession plan as you said but it, it was how the um, business would progress. Uh, our first deal was to signal to the children, our children, that we need to think about this and 
You talk to you. Two of them were married, and other, our daughter had a long-time relationship, uh, which she married um, very soon after all this started. Um, but you think about what you want as kids, and talk to your your mates or your partner about where they want to head to. And we gave them a little time to do that, and said, right now we need to get together and f formalise this a bit. Um, and we we approached our accountant who we were, Sally and I were very friendly with and uh, we'd worked with him for years and our children respected him and um, and perhaps knew some of his children through their school and university things so there was a feeling of um, trust there and, and respect uh, and we asked our accountant if he could facilitate a meeting we decided it was much better to do it on neutral ground rather than their home property where emotions can tend to take over a little more. Um, <clears throat> so he had that initial meeting um, in his Brisbane office and went, asked all the kids, right, what are your aspirations? Put it on the table. Please be frank. Don't think you're going to offend your brothers or sister um, or, or us. Put it down because we need to hear it. And, um, and then we discussed that and asked for him at the end of the process to, to try and f formalise it to a degree and then circulate his notes to all of us so we could go away and, and think about it. And then we perhaps didn't have a, another formal meeting but plenty of phone contact as to, you know, the notes that we, he sent from this meeting, do you want to change them at all or do we use that as a scaffold for, for where we go? And um, that, that planned out fairly well and because he was our accountant um, the suggestions that came out of it was basically for a start that that they didn't want to come back and run the enterprise as it was mainly set up to run and, and it, it had a very strong emphasis on seed stock production and those of you that, you that run studs know that unless you're dedicated to detail and the marketing of that uh, product you've got, it's not something you can employ a, a manager to do really. There's too much individual effort goes into um, and so they decided, well they loved the property and loved the heritage because it had been in our family since 1905, um, they realised that they weren't really motivated to, to run that seed stock production so the immediate sort of suggestion from all of us was that Sally and I should downsize and our enterprise had four separate blocks of land um, so it was easy to perhaps sever one of those off and get rid of that which would uh, reduce our workload and so you know, we agreed on that and the, then the accountant looked at the sort of tax implications of doing that and then we went um, and had just bounced it off a couple of solicitor type people and said is it feasible? Yeah fine. So that's what we did for a start. We decided we'd downsize and we knew of some other young people that were looking to either get established on a block of land or expand what they had and we offered it um, one block to I think well, one of the things about downsizing was we wanted to get rid of not only the block of land but the stock on it so that we weren't forcing those stock back on, to, on the, our other countries. So we needed somebody that would take over the whole deal. Um, <clears throat> we offered it to a goddaughter of ours and her husband and, and they were very interested but they decided they weren't quite ready for it at that stage. Um, somehow the word got out uh, that the coaches were looking to downsize a bit and we, we had neighbours ring and say, look, if you're thinking of selling some, we, we'd be very interested. So immediately that flag that we had a product that was saleable. Um, it may, be, may not have been the way we wanted to go, but we knew we could do it. And um, then we, we'd known Rick and Alice Greener for a long time. Rick had actually come and done some work at home um, while he was at school, just school-based work experience and thing. And we knew that they were um, looking to expand and um, yeah, d grow their enterprise. We offered it one block to them and they said, oh yeah, thanks, we'll look at that. They did some figures 
and took a while but then they came back and said um, you know we yeah we are interested we're actually thinking of extending it even further and perhaps making that initial step and then going further on and all oh, that sounded good to Sally and I because it put some real future into the thing but then sadly they did some more figures and came back to us and said um, you know it's too big we can't we can't handle that now so we were left in limbo a bit um, but we'd, we'd started the process going and uh, <coughs> And we, we knew the background that was there, and I think, um, fortunately, we did it relatively early. And um, Gordon was speaking about train wrecks, and I think if you look at the statistics of train wrecks, most of them happen because things are travelling too fast. And <clears throat> you need to allow yourself time. And because uh, seasons were relatively good at home and, um, and cattle prices were not good but firm and things we did have time and so um, we while well, we had a few setbacks and uh, people that we'd offered part enterprise to had said no we don't but and then when we got all excited about Rick and Alice perhaps going the whole hog and then they pulled back um, because they realized they had young family coming on and maybe it was too big a bite um, but we did, had to stall off a, uh, stall it off a bit, and um, and so we yeah you know, was put not on the back burner, but we thought, well we've got time, don't rush it, and you need time to do that, and get your your thoughts together, and again talking to our children and how they were going, um, but it then gave us time to think, you know, well we've moved so far. Um, where do we go now? And so again, talking to our children, how, do, you, do you people have any idea of people that might be interested in doing this? And, um, and gave them the opportunity to feed into the system. And also we ask, we ask them, you know, can you help us in any other ways? Um, and do it, you know, if, if you've got ideas about it, feed them back to us. And so really what that was all doing was keeping the communication lines open so that we, we knew where we were heading or hoping to head and they knew too and um, while they didn't really want to become involved in the um, the day to day running the enterprise it was important to them in their long haul and their own families and children thing that um, the e enterprise if it passed this way or that way um, achieved a value because ultimately um, we knew, we let them know what what our wills uh, had designated, that um, it was in their financial interest that the whole thing worked properly. And we said, you know, don't count your chickens. Uh, we might get <laughs> extravagant and blow it between now and then. But there was that thought too that um, as you get older, and I think Rosemary asked the question about moving closer in. For us, um, if we were thinking of moving off the property, one of uh, it would have been nice perhaps think um, we can't live without animals or dogs and things and to get a smaller block but um, another one of the drivers was to move closer to where better medical and dental um, faci facilities were and uh, while Eidsvold had a nice little hospital and a good aerial ambulance system um, if you've got to go to specialists if, you, if you're closer to them it's not a big hassle to have to drive half a day to get there and things so it, that was one of the things that we needed to move in closer but we weren't um, really driven by the fact that we had to stay as as primary producers um, so we were prepared by Sally and I we didn't want to leave home but once we made the step um, we'd given ourselves the option that we could just go buy a living um, block even if it was only a house block um, we, we weren't sort of driven that Things. And you know, any of you, that, and I guess most of you do, that have dogs, um, it's hard to live without dogs. And we were thinking of moving to Budrum, and I had um, normal working cattle dogs that were fairly well oriented toward Kelpies, and we weren't prepared to take those dogs down to live in an urban area. And where we had our uh, block of land at Budrum, a lot of scrub turkeys there that. Um, 
I knew what my dogs would do there. <laughs> you know, I, I hope they don't knock them around too much because if they kill one, I'd like to eat the good bits of them. <laughs> anyway, we told, told the neighbor, said, well, why don't you come out? Why don't you come down? And some of our friends, I said, oh, I got these dogs and they'd only kill all the scrub turkey. And I said, oh, geez, that'll be good. <laughs> that'll get them out of our gardens. And I said, when they finish cleaning up the scrub turkeys, they'll probably start on the little fluffy white dogs. <laughs> and, oh, well, that'll be even better. <laughs> no, but we do have neighbours that do have nice fluffy white dogs. We've made friends with them where we are now. But um, little things like that, you have to consider that um, if you do move to an urban area, the poultry you had in your backyard, the potties, the horses and things, you have to learn to, to get away from that. So build that into your plans. And if, if you need to have those things, maybe you need to move a little, if you want to move closer in and while your offspring or somebody else takes over the running of your property, um, build into the fact that it's, it is a big lifestyle change and set yourself up with a target that's going to allow you to enjoy the things that you've always loved and, and want to continue with. My two dogs, I had um, two full brothers out of different litters. Um, great dogs and uh, unfortunately they didn't like dingoes much and um, and they'd helped me kill a few dingoes and unfortunately in the end it was dingoes that got rid of both of them um, which was sad but it it made the break a little easier for me then that I didn't have to to leave my dogs at home or give them to somebody else and things but um, it, a lot of those things are very important to us. Sally had a lovely garden around our property um, that she'd spent all her married life looking after and to walk away from even things like that aren't easy and those of you that are gardeners or mothers and that looked after family and things will understand that and, and for you men you need to discuss those things with your wives because um, you might be getting tired of doing the fencing and the mustering and the branding thing but your wife has a very very basic interest in your enterprise and she needs to be happy too. Um, so keep those communication lines open so that you all are feeling you're heading in a, into a space that um, is going to be satisfying. Um, I'm just checking the notes I'd had here that you'll take home with you anyway. Um, and you know realistically that initial start for us that ran into a few hurdles probably was good in the long run because it taught us to slow down and really consider what we were doing and get used to the fact that life will change. Um, and as Gordon and John will make themselves available to you as consultants and other ideas, there are people out there that can help you with the whole process. And I think it's very important that you consider that. Um, you, we spend so much time as rural producers um, or in a rural enterprise somewhere working like one thing um, to do the day-to-day -to -day things, fixing the fences if it rains and your flood fences are down, you've got to get out and do that. But there's other parts of the business that need just as much attention that we tend to override too much. And you need to spend the time to do that, and not only the time, but the money too often. And some of this outside advice will cost you money. And most of them charge more than you've ever earned per hour in your life, so that becomes hard. Um, but it's a part of the enterprise transition that you need to consider. And there is good advice out there. And uh, we were fortunate that um, uh, the way our plan turned out, our partners sort of introduced some of that to us and basically they paid for it too, which was um, easy. It didn't cost them any more, but we were prepared to listen to their advice. And uh, if you can take the shortcuts without cutting your nose off to spite your face, as it were, um, there's a lot of people who will give you free advice. Some of it's not worth ha having, but there's a lot of it's well worth listening to. And we, I hope that you'll take some things home from this day that um, you can build on. You don't have to believe it all, but put it in your, your brain system so that you can refer to it and, um, and come back to it and, and take home some take-home messages. Um, 
I'm going to catch up in a little bit of time because I don't have any questions here because um, what I'll build on this afternoon is is having started the initial process and then working through a lot of the things that Gordon put up before about um, how we could could set up our system and he he actually said to make the most money in with the least effort in the shortest possible time um, m my philosophy is a little more um, to make the optimal amount of money um, and I think that's very important that that you need don't be greedy um, there needs to be something left in it for the for the other bodies in, involved in the plan and um, c certainly you need to look after your own future as you get older um, health problems are going to crop up medical attention and things aren't cheap so you need to allow for that but um, you can't screw the last drop of blood out of it um, do as best you can, but set up your plan so that you can get what I think is the optimal value. And the only way you'll get that is to find the right target. People that want what you have. Um, it's, if you force somebody into doing something that they're not really um, very relaxed about, it won't work, I don't think. Um, so be prepared to take your time um, and don't hope that it'll, it'll happen tomorrow. Um, our plan started, it stretched over eventually nearly 10 years and fortunately our health held up and uh, we were enjoying what we were doing and um, I got up each morning thinking well I'm on borrowed time but when I went to school they told you that um, average age for man was three score a year and ten and I'd, <laughs> I knew at the end of our plan I'd have passed 70 and I'd, I'd worked out that my teeth lasted me till 70. Um, that was fine, but I've lived past then. I wished I'd looked after my teeth a little better. Because <laughs> <laughs> dentists aren't cheap either. And they love looking in my mouth and think, boy, there's a gold mine in here. Uh, but all of those little things you need to build into the equation that um, your health is important to you. If you walk away from your business and you've got some money to enjoy, to go traveling, don't leave it too late when you're not going to be fit and, and able to travel. Um, and have enough time to do it at your own time. Uh, travel becomes a whole lot easier nowadays. You don't need to go away for three months to make um, the airfare worth it. You can go away for two, three weeks and um, airfares have become relatively cheaper. You can go home and if you live in a, in a small acreage block where you've got animals, you'll find someone to look after it for a few weeks and it'll still be there when you come back. And same thing if you've got a, an urban area, your garden, someone will look after it. Um, but you need to be, allow yourself the time to enjoy the fruits of your labour. And um, after lunch this afternoon, I'll try to work through how it all fitted in for us. Um, but I'm here to, to answer questions and Heather, you, people do have our contact numbers do they in their papers and things and and if if you need to ring me any time as you go through plan to say how did you overcome this problem um, I've got a mobile phone and maybe I don't answer it as often as I can but you can always leave a message on it and I will ring back but um, just talking through things with other people often clears it in your own mind and and we were able to do that a lot as we work through our uh, transition period and I suggest that you keep your mind open and um, utilise the facilities that are about you and the friends you have and the expertise that is out there.